Hi, welcome to another malware analysis video where today we'll be looking at the Mamba ransomware campaign which is also known as HDD Crypto. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do as usual is have a look to see whether a packer has been used. You don't need to use this tool, there are plenty here and a reminder, you know, there's plenty of tools for looking at the PE information but I'm just a uh, personal favourite of mine is PE Scanner um, which we can use to determine whether a packer has been used as well along with many other many other tools. We're also going to check virus total as usual so um, we can see that it's detected as malicious by 55 out of 60. Um, antivirus systems, we have our MD5 and SHA-1 stuff here. Um, a link if you want to go and have a look at the analysis, you can just double click that and that will open up for us. We can also have a look to try and get a bit more information you can see the, uh, the imports here and what functions have been imported. Uh, information about the sections, when it was created, protection. So this is related to, I mean here we've got stuff related to uh, buffer overflow protection. So uh, DEP, I think it's data execution protection or prevention. And the SLR is address based layout randomization. So this is just to say that each time the system reboots, it will it won't go to the same, it won't be at the same um, address, memory address, and data execution prevention. I can't remember exactly how that works. Maybe come back to this in a later video. But basically, it has some buffer overflow uh, protection, and this address-based ran layout randomization is also. Um, means that it's going to move each time, because it's going to move in memory, it makes it a bit harder for analysis as well, um, if you're looking at it. It depends whether you're looking at it from the kind of the exploit and CTF point of view or the malware analysis point of view. Um, so maybe we'll have a look at some of these techniques, or well, we will have a look at some of these techniques when we start getting into some CTF and exploit videos, um, where we start looking at what kind of SQL injection, buffer overflows, cross-site scripting, all that good stuff. Alright, so P scanner will finish running now. We can see similar sort of information here, MD5, stuff like that. CRC is claimed to be zero bytes. It's not, obviously, so that's pretty suspicious. Um, see the date when it was created here, uh, although that can be spoofed. Uh, Clam antivirus is detected as HDD Crypto 2. We have our sections here, we have some resources, so although it's one this single EXE at the moment, we're gonna have some more resource have some more EXEs and other resources generated. So it would be interesting to see what some of those do uh, when, it, when it comes to dynamic analysis. And again we have our imports and the, the functions, specifically the suspicious functions that have been imported from these modules. Okay, that's fine. So um, I'm gonna jump over to the Windows system. Okay, so over on the Windows system here, the um, first thing we're going to do is just have a look at the malware in IDA Pro. So, we open this up and we should get a clear view here. Here we go, okay. So, I'm not an expert in IDA Pro, I'm just going to have a try and get an idea of what some of this might be doing. You can see it looks like a file is going to be created here, netpass.txt, so we'll keep an eye out for this folder, DC22, being created. Getting shared drive information, it's going to add a new user, Mythbusters, the password 123456, um, set it as an administrator, and it's going to create a new service called defragment service. So it's not clear what that service does. I'm assuming that's going to be they're trying to call it defragment service because it looks pretty innocent. We'll try and have a look at that a bit further whenever we get into the dynamic analysis. Okay, and um, yeah, we're trying to create the service. Create a service successfully, rebooting. So it's going to create a service and then it's going to reboot the system by the sounds of it. Okay. Let's have a look if we jump back to main. Okay, and have a look at the strings in here. That was one thing we actually didn't do on um, 
Remnox, which uh, is something I would always do, run strings or PSTR, um, and there are some ties you can use on that, or you can use grep and stuff like that to try and pull out stuff that might be relevant, any IP addresses, any uh, files that might be created, any file extensions that might be excluded or might be encrypted, you know, and that sort of stuff. So, okay, we have a strings window, I'm going to move that over here just so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, so, we have some error messages here, I'm not going to worry about that too much. I know that this this piece of ransomware, I know it uses a project called Decrypt, uh, and I think Disk Cryptor as well, which basically open source free tools which they've um, used for their they've used for their own purposes here. So um, what should be I think I think there is actually NetPass as well. NetPass is like a password recovery tool, so netpass.exe uh, another, I think, free or open source source piece of software, which um, these kind of executables have been used, or these programs have been used by the attackers in their software to um, for malicious purposes. Okay, so we can see some stuff here. It's going to be running mount.exe as well. It's going to delete the defragment service. We're trying to cover up the tracks towards the end. So it started the hard hard disk encryption. Add a new user, create some text files, .exe. Okay. Password not set, exit. Okay. Password not set, exit. So, uh, I don't know, um, this might be related, I mean, this is obviously near the start of the program running, so, um, We'll try actually just running the the piece of malware, but I'm pretty sure that it doesn't actually run without without taking a password or a parameter as a um, you need to pass in a parameter whenever you run it. So we'll try it, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to go into command prompt to pass it in one two three four five six for it to run. And um, so we'll have a look now. Okay, so we're just going to have a look at the dynamic side of things now. So, um, as usual, we're going to open a couple of tools. We have RedShot, so we can take a snapshot of the registry and then we'll be able to compare it afterwards and see what's changed. Process Hacker, so we can have a look at the processes as they spawn. And uh, this is going to be particularly important during this one because we're going to need to suspend some processes. The reason being, we saw when we looked in IDA Pro. Um, we saw when we looked at the Pro, it's going to create a user, I think it was Mythbusters. Um, it's going to create a service, it was a defragment service, and a decryptor service. But, but after creating the first service on the user, um, it said that the system was going to reboot. So if we take a snapshot of the registry here, and we start our network capture. If we just allow that to reboot, it's going to close down the packet capture, it's going to, um, we're going to lose our registry snapshot. So, I'm going to try and catch it early. Um, so I'll just try and run this. I know if I double click this, nothing's going to happen. The reason being, we need to actually run this with a parameter. So I'm going to go into the desktop and uh, select the exe. I'm going to pass in a parameter, one, two, three, four, five, six. And this time, it should spawn a process. So you can see here, command uh, 131.exe, service created, let's just spend it quickly. Alright, so it's created the disk cryptos driver, decrypt. Uh, decrypt, along with a lot of the services that this uses, is uh, decrypt, it uses decrypt, which is obviously a, an encryption project or program. It uses NetPass, which is a password recovery tool. And uh, I know it runs mount.exe, I'm not sure, um, I'm assuming that's probably uh, wasn't written by the malware authors either. So they've basically taken some projects, legitimate programs which have legitimate purposes and um, just kind of packaged it with some in, in their own uh, piece of malware. So we can see this is going to set a boot start, so we know that whenever it reboots it's going to run decrypt. Um, it's going to run it with the password. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not sure if that's the same password. It might. They might have just hidden that. Oh, actually, yeah. Okay. It's not. Um, I thought I was.
was uh, show the password. That's fine. So um, just before uh, I know it's not going to take long before it's going to do a restart. So I'm going to take a second snapshot. I'm going to go in quickly and have a look to see if there's any anything interesting in the uh, in Wireshark. SSDP discover. So yeah, this may might this this might be related to the malware. I'm not 100% sure. And we'll see if there's any DNS queries. Some DNS queries there again. The, you get quite a lot of noise just uh, from VMware and Windows uh, 7 in general. Um, nothing that immediately sticks out to me there, so I'm just going to go ahead and resume this process. And I don't think we're going to have long before. Okay, schedule task, schedule a task there, which I'm going to presume is shut down. Okay, so it's created defragment service just before shutting down. And it's going to reboot. So yeah, this is a full disk encryptor. It's going to encrypt everything, including the master boot record. And it's going to produce its own, which is going to ask us the encryption, meaning we won't be able to get get to the this starting window screen once the encryption is completed. And once this boots back up, I want to try and get in there pretty quickly and open up the process hacker so we can see what happens as soon as it, um, as soon as the system boots. We don't need two of them running. So we have our 131. I'm going to suspend it just while I quickly have a look at the service that it created. So it created this defragment service, which is essentially it's just running this uh, the malware 131.exe with that parameter that we passed in originally. So uh, that's what's happened. That's what started whenever it boots it. So uh, an average user, they're not really, you know, they should, but they probably won't recognize this as malicious behavior you know the fact that a descriptor uh, service a little pop-up came up to say that's been created and the system rebooted and then that popped up it should be enough but due to the names you know um, defragment service isn't it doesn't sound inherently malicious um, so uh, they might they might not actually realize uh, we'll just go in and quickly have a look as well at the strings for 131.exe. Expand this out a bit. Okay, so. Fragment service log file dot text. Uh, so we knew from Ida Pro it's going to create this DC twenty two folder. So let's go and have a quick look at that actually. If we go into DC twenty two, yep. So we've got decrypt DC con, which I think's going to be called by decrypt. So actually do the encrypting, net pass and mount. Now we have a log file there. So it installed the driver. It's getting the share information. Create the service. Rebooted Windows. Um, maybe starting service main, maybe starting the uh, defragment service. Um, okay, and that's all that's happening so far. So we'll keep an eye on that when we go back to it. Uh, really, I should open up Wireshark here and uh, Redshot and have a look at that. But I'm actually, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna run another tool here, Process Monitor. So that we can try and keep our eye on the 131.exe, I believe it is, whenever I resume it. So I'm going to hit resume. We've got 131. See if that spawns anything here. We've got 131 there, I spotted somewhere. Okay, I'm going to include 131. So now we're just looking at 131 here, you can see there's quite a lot of changes happening around the registries, creating, closing files, querying the network. You can now see dccon.exe is running. 
um, it's been created by the 131.exe. If we go and have a look at the strings, we can see there's obviously our ransom message, you are hacked, um, information about a computer, DCCon, process is being launched. Okay. Cryptographic provider, Microsoft Strong Cryptographic Provider. We have a lot of crypto related DLLs there. Some network addresses, cryptbase.dll. So there's obviously some encryption going on at the moment. Um, I would you can see how many processes have actually been spawned here. If we were to be looking at DCC, um, uh, oops, then if we were to be looking at DCC here, then uh, we'd probably be seeing more to do with the actual encryption process. But uh, let's go back and just see if there's any changes to the log file. Yep, we can see that it didn't find. Um, share drive, exit mount, start hard drive encryption. Okay, so it's probably going to take a while to run through the encryption here, so I'll, I'll, I'll come back whenever we see something else interesting happening. Just note that also if we look at the disk activity, we have some, um, you probably gleam some information from this, you can see here the master file table. Now this might just be some a lot of standard Windows stuff showing up here. Um, but some of it I'm sure is related to Decon, the disk crypto console which is still um, working away so once this is completed the encryption we say it's going to restart the system again when we'll, we won't be able to boot back into Windows just say just to give you a bit more information about the malware, it's using AES encryption. I'm not too sure if I mentioned that previously, I think it's 512 rather than uh, 4096 or 2048. I'm not too sure. They, they, uh, I know um, somebody had contacted the malware authors through the email address they provide to, you know, to make the payment and they had advised it was either 2048 or 4096 bit AES encryption. It's, uh, as far as I'm aware, it's actually 512. Um, the file name, 131.exe, this can vary, but it's just generally a three digit value. And you saw how we actually launched it earlier, we had to launch it with the parameter in it. Um, there are different variants, not all of which will have, will, will require that. And um, whenever this would have been, you know, when it was propagated in the wild, it was generally delivered through an exploit kit, and you know um, that it would have been very easy for an attacker just to craft an exploit to, um, to you know, exploit whatever vulnerability it's able to find. Maybe the maybe the victim is just while well, this is running through, just talk through typical attack scenarios. So the victim might get a phishing email um, targeting them with a malicious URL on it, which if they click it, will have an exploit kit. Um, it could be a malicious website or it could be a legitimate website which has been taken over. Um, uh, hackers put some malicious content in there, it's called a water and hole attack. Um, so at which point the exploit kit will start scanning the browser trying to find any vulnerabilities which it's got an exploit for. Once it finds the best one, it will launch the exploit and deliver the payload. So the payload will be, in this case, 131.exe. Um, which will start performing the encryption. And yep, still taking a while to run through. So um, again, I'll just uh, I'll come back whenever this is whenever it's uh, doing something more interesting. Okay, so the DCC seems to have stopped there. I'm gonna try and suspend it and um, just have another quick look at the log file. Okay, no changes on that side of things. All right, we'll just resume. But uh, the DCC the encrypt, encrypt, encryptor there seems to have stopped running. So we might see some more action shortly. Okay, so I've left it for a, a little while there without any, can't see much more happening. Um, so I think I'm going to try and just restart the system. Doesn't seem to be much more activity at all. 
um, with the 131. Can't see any new processes which have been spawned which are doing anything, so I'm going to try and restart the system and see whether it launches successfully or whether we get the ransom message. Could have been that it's encrypted. The Yes, it has encrypted the MBR. Okay. So, yeah, we can see the ransom message now. It's not like a lot of the ransom we see, you know, with a uh, nicely desktop wallpaper and pop up window with uh, some nice support features. You know, this is us right back to the. We can't get into Windows anymore. So, it's telling us their ID is 123 139, and we need to contact them on that email address for the encryption key. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you have, please like and subscribe, and any comments are always welcome, feedback, positive or negative. If there's anything about this malware which you think I've missed, you might be interested to hear about. Any tools you recommend that I could have uh, used to make this video better, please let me know. Alright, thanks.